We now know how to transform positions, time, and velocities in special relativity. Let's move one step forward and calculate the transformation equation for the acceleration in special relativity. Remember, this is the acceleration of a particle we are observing from two inertial frames. We will proceed in the transformation of velocities by differentiating the previous results the transformations of the velocity and the transformation for the time. We will divide one over the other to get the acceleration. I will calculate the one for the velocity in the x-axis. Remember that the transformation for the y and z axis in the velocities are different. That will be something that you can do as homework. So these are the equations for the transformation of velocity in the x-axis and the transformation of time. Now what I'm looking for is du over dt, which is going to be the acceleration. In order to do that, I need to differentiate the velocity and differentiate the time. To differentiate the velocity, dux, then is the, will be the differential of what I have at the numerator, which is going to be du prime x multiplied by whatever I have in the denominator, which is 1 plus u prime x v over c square minus whatever I have upstairs, which is u x prime plus v, multiplied by the differential of what I have downstairs, which is going to be this v over c square d u prime x, everything divided by the denominator squared. 1 plus u prime, prime x v over c squared. I can rearrange this a little bit. I can factorize this du prime x and um, rearrange this a little bit. So I'm coming here and then that is going to be um, 1 plus u prime x v over c squared is this term here minus and then I multiply this u prime x so v over c squared u prime x minus v square over c square divided by this, oh sorry, this was a squared as I said before. So this is 1 plus u prime x v over c square is a square and then everything multiplied by the u prime x that I factorized from the numerator. If I look at these two terms they cancel so I can simplify this a little bit and this v squared over c squared is going to be beta squared so this is 1, this cancels the other one so this is 1 minus beta squared and down here I have 1 plus u prime x v over c squared, everything is squared, d u prime x. So that's the differential of velocity in the x-axis. Now the differential of time is dt is equal to gamma dt prime plus v over c squared dx prime. So now what I'm going to do is this differential of velocity with respect to time. This is in the rest reference frame, so this is on the station, So the, and this we will call it a sub x, the acceleration as measured from the station. And now let's have a look at what happens from the train. So all of this divided by this dt. So it's going to be um, 1 minus beta squared divided by gamma times this parenthesis, gamma times 1 plus u prime x v over c squared, everything squared, and then I have du prime x over dt prime plus v over c square dx prime. Now I will divide in the numerator and denominator by dt prime so this is going to be this term here remains the same and this thing here is going to be oops. Now, this is going to be the accelerator, acceleration as seen from the train. This is 1 and this is the velocity u prime. So it is
Now, look that gamma is 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus beta squared, so this and this is just 1 over gamma squared, so this 1 over gamma squared can be uh, multiplied by this gamma, that will be 1 over gamma to the third. Look that this term here squared is the same as this other one, so that will be to the power of 3. And this acceleration here. So that is how accelerations transform. So this is the acceleration of the particles observed from the station, that's the acceleration of the particles observed from the train, and it depends on gamma, but it depends also on the velocity, not just on the acceleration, but also on the velocity. So look at this final result. We have that the acceleration as measured from the rest frame is that of the moving frame S prime divided by gamma cube. And this factor of one plus U prime X over uh, times V over C square. So this acceleration measured on the station depends on the acceleration measured on the train, but also on the speed measured on the train U prime X. Now that we have this result, let's think of a particularly interesting example. Remember the planet of the apes? In less than an hour we'll finish our six months out of Cape Kennedy. Six months in deep space. By our time, that is. According to Dr. Hasslein's theory of time in a vehicle traveling nearly the speed of light, the Earth has aged nearly 700 years since we left it. In that case, the astronauts start from Earth and accelerate until they reach their cruise velocity. Let's, let's assume that they experience a constant acceleration in the reference frame in the spacecraft. And this acceleration could be just the acceleration here on Earth, 9.8 meters per second square. There is always a reference frame where they have zero velocity and an acceleration equals to g. If that is the case, then the velocity u prime x is zero, and the velocity of the reference frame changes. We can consider an infinitesimal analysis where the astronauts have zero velocity with respect to this moving frame, and they experience they have an acceleration g or a prime. Then we change to the infinitesimally next frame and analyze the situation, and so on and so on. So the velocity of each frame is v, which changes because of the acceleration. Then we can go back to our previous result where u prime x is zero and a prime is constant, is equals to g in our case. We have that a prime is equals to gamma cubed times a, where a is the acceleration we measure from Earth, a prime is the constant accelerations that the astronauts experience, and gamma changes because v is changing. We can integrate this expression. Now, because we know that we're moving on the x-axis, I will just drop the x sub-index, and because in this case u prime x is going to be zero, then I can write that the acceleration is just a prime over gamma to the power of three. Remember that a prime is a constant. Okay, now I will rewrite that as a prime is equals to gamma cube a, which is the same as a over one minus beta squared to the power of three over two, and I want to integrate this. So a prime is a constant, but not the acceleration. That acceleration I can rewrite as dv over dt, and this one over 1 minus beta squared to the power of 3 over 2. Now, in order to integrate, because remember that I'm, what I'm looking for is the velocity as a function of time, and just as a reminder, beta is equals to v over c, then I will separate the variables dt here, a prime is a constant, and I will integrate this expression. So, on the left-hand side, I will have the integral from a time 0 to an arbitrary time t of a prime dt, and then on the right hand side, I will have the integral from a velocity zero to an arbitrary velocity v of dv over one minus v square over c square to the power of three over two. Uh, 
this integral you just look at the tables be careful you might want to do this change of variables that b is beta c here you know that to integrate that look at the tables and then the integral for this particular expression gives us the velocity over the square root of 1 minus v square over c square yes this is gamma but remember that this v here now does depend on time and this v here now does depend on time and on the left hand side what I have is a prime t now let me rewrite this as a prime t equals to v over the square root of 1 minus v square over c square so what was I looking for well I was looking for the velocity as a function of time so I want to solve this expression for v I'm solving for v so I will square everything there I will square everything, so I will have a prime t square multiplied by 1 minus v square over c square is equals to v square. Then I can rearrange things. For example, I can say that v squared 1 plus a prime t over c, everything square, is equals to a prime t square. So I just grouped everything. Now I can solve for the velocity here. And then let me come here. This is going to be that the velocity is going to be equals to a prime t after I square root everything. And this is a square root of 1 plus a prime t over c. Everything is a square here. So this is the velocity as a function of time where remember that a prime is a constant. So this is the velocity of the spacecraft as seen from Earth. We see how the speed does not increase linearly, but in a some more cumbersome manner. For small times, times smaller than a prime over z, the behavior is linear, but then for large times, this reaches a constant value, reaches the speed of light, but does not go faster than that. This result of the velocity as a function of time is also an expression that we can integrate analytically. So let's do it and find the position as a function of time. Now I have those two expressions. This is the velocity as a function of time, which is an expression that I can also integrate. So let's do it. Let's integrate that expression. Remember that a prime is a constant. I can separate variables again here. I do this integral, look at the tables, I do a change of variables here also to be able to to uh, get what I find in my tables, but that's something pretty straightforward to do. I will just write the final result for this, and I have that that position is going to be c squared over a prime square root of 1 plus a prime t over c, this is a squared, and then out of the square root of negative 1, this comes from the initial conditions that when I substitute this t by a 0, then this cancels, but I still have a, this 1. So, and this is the position as a function of time. If I accelerate on a spacecraft and me as the astronaut experience a constant acceleration a prime all through my journey. For this result, we have that for short times, we will recover Newton's result that x is equal to one half a t squared. For long times, this result is c t. Just position increases linearly with the constant speed equal to that of light. We can plot these results, velocity and position, as a function of time, and we can see how initially we are in the classical regime, but for longer times, we reach that limit of constant of speed of light. The astronauts experience a constant acceleration, but they never travel faster than light. From Earth, their acceleration is not constant, but it decreases until it is zero, and they travel almost at the speed of light.